And so TikTok is a little bit like a weekend in Vegas. I might meet somebody in the bathroom <laughs> and have a really fun conversation with them and then never see them again, but I will always remember that moment. Welcome to Coffee and Art, the podcast. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. Today we have Ashley Richardson George, Chief Content Officer and Partner at Circus Maximus. So I'd love to hear more about your background, kind of what's your current role, how you got there. I have a really untraditional path. I actually started in news. Um, I love that. <laughs> I did the rebrand of MSNBC. Spike Lee was doing that, and I was an, a junior analyst. And that's when kind of social media was just really taking off. And I noticed that everybody was talking about our campaigns on Twitter. So I tracked it and I presented it to the executive team. And they were like, can you keep tracking this? Then we started to like implement the things that we were seeing into the show. Um, and so then I started consulting for the shows on like, how do you incorporate social media and things that are happening live in the shows? And then that was my role for a while. Eventually, I transitioned from there to do an entertainment startup and start their social mm. division. Um, and then we had an entire creative services strategy team that did entertainment, films, and movies. Um, we got to work on a lot of really great things like Get Out, Shape of Water, Come wow. About Your Name. Um, and then I kind of just felt like something was missing for me. It got a little bit too easy, and I'm a person that like really loves a challenge. So I wanted to go to a agency where I really could work up with startups because I knew eventually I wanted to do my own thing, but I just wanted to see how do you run a business mm -hmm. from like series A on. And so I was able to learn that there, take over the strategy department there, and then eventually become partner. And we get to work with a lot of great brands doing ethnographies like Gillette and Always. And so great. I have like a little bit of a bouncing around background, but they all kind of sync up eventually. <laughs> You know, I feel like that's actually really common in advertising and marketing because mm -hmm. I had a similar path where I started out in clinical research mm -hmm. and then now I'm in healthcare, pharmaceutical marketing. But I've met so many people that I, I've even met a writer who used to be a teacher for circus performers, for students oh, wow. in the circus. So I feel like a lot of us come through kind of different channels, but like there's so much in the experience that like you're able to connect the dots, especially like from a creative perspective or a strategic perspective. Yeah, advertising is moving a lot towards storytelling. So mm -hmm. like having the entertainment background and knowing what entertains is really helpful in that. And so we're able to approach content in a way that's more entertaining, um, a little bit quicker. People aren't as precious about the end result <laughs> in entertainment. They just care about the story and how entertaining yeah. it is. So we've been able to kind of pull some of that as um, influencer marketing is getting more popular and people need such a high volume of content. The entertainment background has been super helpful in that. I love that you talk about storytelling because that's such a key part of what we do and you know it applies to so many different aspects of the industry but like that's what people want. They mm -hmm. want a story, they want something that's going to catch your attention and that they can relate to or it's interesting. Um, and I can definitely see from the entertainment background how that's been beneficial because you've got all these different avenues of trying to reach people, engage with them, connect, move them to either you know stick with the show or, or do some other action. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting especially with like social media tie-in and kind of coming at that point and using that as a tool to kind of move and see how to change people's behaviors. Everyone's trying to take that like big brand playbook and then figure out how digital media works with that. And so the majority of the work that I did in entertainment was full spectrum digital media. Mm -hmm. So we're able to kind of like take a look at what that big brand statement is and then we don't have to say that like five million times anymore. <laughs> People get really exhausted of hearing that. And so we look for ways to kind of figure out different trajectories to say that on the different channels in different audiences. I always try to tell people that the channels are like places in life. Like I'm mm -hmm. the same person, but every digital community is different. And so TikTok is a little bit like a weekend in Vegas. I might meet somebody <laughs> in the bathroom and have a really fun conversation with them and then never see them again. But I will always remember that moment. <laughs> Facebook is like multi-generational and your family's there. And Instagram is really like your friends and what you aspire to be. And so while I might be the same person, the things that I might do on those channels mm -hmm. would be different. That's the easiest way for people who really like are like, I need a big brand statement and out of home and a television commercial yeah. to kind of understand and digest what digital content has become. I love that. I think that's such a fantastic analogy and just a great way to overview, like what are the different platforms, their best uses or like how they're most often used. Yeah, it's it can be a lot of work. You need a lot of content these yeah. days. Um, 
So it's also just like, who are you? What do you have avail available to you? Mm -hmm. And how can we make this work for you? I think a lot of times when we meet people, they tell us what they want the end result to be, but mm -hmm. not exactly what their internal capabilities are. And mm -hmm. so I want to build you the best content strategy and the best campaign for what you actually can execute with your media team. And the more that I know about that and the more that we're honest about that, the better that the work performs. Like, don't tell me you want this huge mm -hmm. awareness digital transformation but you don't have any kind of like performance team in-house because it's not yeah. gonna work and it's not gonna be sustainable even at all thought. so we just try to be like really honest about that and onboarding yeah. and briefing <laughs> and um sometimes they get like disappointed but the end result is always better yeah and especially if like if they are excited about something sometimes the phase approach is better or like let's take some baby steps first make sure we're solid here before we're really jumping for that next what's stage. the budget maybe we do some testing <laughs> right. and then figure out if you actually want to go with that tagline that has nothing to do with your brand <laughs> i can appreciate that because i feel like here we're very similar where we want the best for our clients and, mm -hmm. and we also want to be honest with them about like what might work best for them right now mm -hmm. i feel like that's a really similar approach you take but like i've seen how effective it can be and i've seen how much like they appreciate that instead of just being like sure we agree we'll do whatever you want even though you know it's not going to work mm -hmm. it's like no no we do have your best interests at heart and like thank you for coming to us the experts we can help you figure out the best way to get those results and it's great to develop that trust with them because then the next time you can push a little further and push a little right. further um so that's always my approach as well i like to develop that rapport with them and showcase to them that we've saved them some money and that maybe we could try some more interesting things a lot of the work that i do with png is like mm -hmm transforming legacy brands for them. Mm -hmm. They have these amazing brands that have been around for over 50 years and the younger generation is kind of like anti-establishment. <laughs> so how do we appeal to them but still be true to ourselves and transform ourselves in ways that are authentic to us and don't seem like we're pandering to the youth and then we look really out of touch. And right. so it's like, what are those small steps? Why do they feel like we're out of touch? And then what do those things mean to them? Mm -hmm. um, as America is becoming more multicultural, um, we all have really different backgrounds and how we grew up and that's really pertinent in how we dissect information. Absolutely. So the ethnographies have been really helpful, like being in people's homes and spending with them, shopping with them on Amazon, shopping with them in the store, and then realizing that the way that people grow up really has an impact mm -hmm. in the, the things that they think are good and the things that they buy. Yeah, I think that's so fascinating. And, and I think that like, especially it speaks to like the personalization that's like so frequent now. And, and that's so important for like, that's really shaping how we are communicating with people, how we're marketing to them. Um, so and that actually brings me to one of the next questions I had as we we're talking, like, is there something that really excites you right now about the field that you're in or any of the work that you're doing? I really love the ethnographies because I went to school for anthropology. <laughs> So I have a degree in anthropology. So that getting to explain to other people why something doesn't hit or why a word choice might be sensitive to a specific community. I think when you're working with bigger clients, the work that you do is not as exciting, but it has mm -hmm. a lot of impact. And so um, getting to showcase talent of color for the way that they see themselves in the world has been really impactful for me. We got to cast a South Asian man for a Gillette campaign. And I don't think that that was ever done before we yeah. had done it. Um, and so one of the things that we spent a lot of time talking about is like, what is beauty in that community? Not mm -hmm. as what, is, what do we think is beautiful mm -hmm. in that community? What do they think is beautiful about themselves? And how do we best showcase that? How do we best showcase their grooming practices and make sure that that experience feels really authentic? And small things like that get me like really excited because it's wish mm -hmm. it's what I wish I saw when I was yeah. younger. Absolutely. And I love that you said the word authentic too, because I think that's really important. It's not just about, you know, it's not it's pandering to the community just for, um, you know, generation for business generation, but it's really about like understanding and wanting to help, wanting to solve a problem, wanting to have that inclusivity, but also to just make sure that like you are reaching the people with what's important to them. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's great. And I know, you know, for us, a lot of the work that we do when we've been tapped by our different clients to go in and kind of ride more of a nuanced view, a more diverse view, um, we can appreciate it because they've often come to us and they're like, they're genuinely, they're like, we want to make sure that, you know, we may have had research in the past, but we want to know what's current now. We want to know the best way to reach people or maybe like it hasn't been as nuanced as they, they've liked in the past. Yeah, we have a lot of uncomfortable conversations, mm -hmm. but 
We've developed a trust internally that people are safe to ask the questions that maybe they would never generally ask. And those uncomfortable conversations like spin into like really fun stories about people's families and really interesting moments and things that you didn't know about them. And that also just helps us work closer together. Um, And then challenge one another in healthy ways. Like I Mm. need challenge regularly. Um, And I appreciate the challenge. I appreciate the growth in me. And so, I'm always, I always pull a client aside. I'm like, we're gonna have a private uncomfortable conversation, but I would love to have the uncomfortable conversation in front of the larger group so that we all have the ability to grow after this. Right. And you're all having that that opportunity to kind of speak, speak your truth or talk about like where the issue is for people to hear that too, if they hadn't maybe realized there was an issue or there was something that was causing a problem or you know a little bit of a rub. Mm-hmm. Giving that opportunity for everyone to be in the room, so important. And I'd love to talk because I know we were talking about this in the pre kind of pre production stage. Um, you know, speaking of the importance of seeing yourself, seeing people like you, seeing people like your friends, your family. Um, I know your daughter <laughs> as a project she's working on. I'd love for the audience to learn more about this. My daughter had come to me and she said that she was really interested in starting a business. Um, I've held her off for about a year, but now we're actively working on it. She wanted to see herself represented in creative. She loves coloring. She's learning how to draw. And so she's starting a coloring book company. She has three books sketched out. Two of them are in progress right now. She's working through the strategy and branding with lots of mom's help, but she's very opinionated (laughs) about mom's thoughts. Um, And we're kind of just seeing where it goes this year with her. She is very... um, into setting herself up for financial success and not wanting to marry somebody for money or work at a job that she doesn't like. So she's like, how much money can I make that's not taxable a year and can you invest that for me while I'm young? And then when I grow up, maybe after college, I can just buy my first apartment and then have some property and then move on from there. She like wants life (laughs) options, she has a life plan. I wish that I thought of that really young. (laughs) But it's kind of just exciting to see the world through her eyes and the creativity in her at such a young age. So I'm gonna stop you there for one second. Please tell the audience how old your daughter is. My daughter is eight. (laughs) She's just 10. That's phenomenal. And I think a true testament to the the role model, like, or the model that you've showed her in what a woman can be, what like, what we can aspire to, what we should be looking for. I mean, that's fantastic that she's already planning to have this business, get some investments, buy an apartment when she's older. I've been fortunate enough to work in workplaces that have been very open to me bringing her and I'm very transparent. Like when I go somewhere, I'm like my daughter, I'm a full-time mom and a full-time executive. My daughter, if she does not have school, she will be here. Yeah. Um, and I introduce her to everybody and I make sure that she takes the time to learn their job and ask them questions about their life and how they got there. And so she's doing a little ethnography herself yeah. and I really want her to decide what she wants her future to be as opposed to what I think that she's amazing at. Mm -hmm. Um, And she really takes it to heart. She's on set all the time, learning how to take photographs. She learns lighting all the time. That's amazing. And she really is a creative. Um, And so it's just exciting to see that growth in her and the fact that she believes that she can do those things because there's so Mm -hmm. many amazing women. Circus Max is 60% women. So she gets to see a lot of really strong women doing very different things. That's fantastic. And I think that exposure at an early age to all different things is great because, you know, oftentimes we have a strong internship program here and, you know, it's important for us to be able to expose people to as many different types of um, opportunities that there are in our industry Um, and getting at that very young age, especially like from a business perspective, strategic perspective, creative perspective is just going to be invaluable for her. I can't wait to see you. She does. <laughs> One day I'll work for her. <laughs> and definitely when you have those books up, when when their link is ready and they're able I'll to send, send first, please do. We'll absolutely post that. Um, you know, kind of thinking about like looking at her and like her future and what's ahead and kind of where you've come from, like what shaped you. Do you is there any advice you think that you would give yourself if you're 18 or to people her age or, or older? I think there's like I credit a lot of the things that I'm able to do with my education. Mm -hmm. My dad always 
told us like if you invest in everything and anything never be afraid to invest in education and i went to private school on the scholarship and i took it really seriously but it really taught me to think differently mm -hmm. and to challenge and to public speak and to be a whole person who appreciates sports art music and so i did put her in the exact same school that i went to and i had the opportunity because i felt like it was core to mm -hmm. how i think and how i see the world and that's why I am the way I am and I and I see a lot of me in her so I thought she would thrive there and when I was 18 I think I'm a person I just had this talk with my dad yesterday who kind of waits to check every box and feel really secure before I make a decision mm -hmm. even if I know what the right decision is but I would believe in myself a little bit more when I was 18 because every job opportunity that I've had I've created mm -hmm. the position did not exist I saw opening I saw that something needed to be done and I did it but I always felt like I didn't belong there even when I did. Right. Um, and regardless of the awards and the accolades, I always just felt a little bit like an imposter. Mm -hmm. I also, when I was in my 20s, looked like a teenager. So I had a lot of trouble getting people to like stop thinking about what I look like and take what take I was seriously. saying seriously, which all women do. And so I always was like very in my head about how people perceive me as opposed to mm. focusing on my growth possibilities and just what I wanted to be. And so I would tell my younger self, like you're capable in any room and just go for whatever you want to do. Love that. I love that. I think there's this element of, you know, not, not to be fearless, but to be bold, right? Yes. Go for it. Be bold and believe in yourself. And I think that carries us, um, you know, a long ways a lot of the time, because sometimes it's innate. I'm sure there's a, even like what you've done in your past, um, your achievements, it's, just that belief, even if it wasn't as strong, but like, yeah, imagine if, if that was really like prominent and known early, how far, even farther you go. I'd be such a different person <laughs> if like what I realized in my thirties, I just believed everyone always saw it in me, but I'd be like, mm -hmm. okay. Right. <laughs> um, it takes a while for you just to believe in yourself as opposed to just listening to the things that people are telling you. Yeah. And I will say there's a certain kind of magic. There's a certain confidence, especially the older you get and the more secure and you can look back and say, I wish I knew this earlier, but it, it is really nice to come to that realization at any age and just say, no, I actually like, go me. I'm, I'm pretty fantastic. I, you know, I was able to overcome so much or I was courageous in this situation that could have been really difficult. So. One of the things that someone gave me feedback about myself is like, you don't introduce yourself well. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you kind of were just like, I'm Ashley. I'm a partner at this agency. I oversee these departments. She's like, you have done amazing things and you have had amazing clients and you have done things that like nobody else has done. You've created different creative categories. Right. And you just introduced yourself like, hi, I'm Ashley. <laughs> and so I always let her introduce me. <laughs> but that's like another thing that I'm working on, like being able to celebrate yourself without mm. feeling bad about that. Right. Um, and I encourage, I run a women's club at our agency and we do a lot of, um, feedback with one another just about our growth how we're presenting ourselves um we make our, what we call our own boardroom of people love it um and i just wish that i had that when i was younger so i'm just g giving them this perspective of always like what do you want to be in the next five years and how do we make that happen um and it's it's just great to see all of them grow i feel like i feel like they're all my baby <laughs> <laughs> well look and i think about like even with your daughter like how what an achievement that at her age she's thinking about this and she's got this like focus and this drive that's amazing so absolutely passing that on to other women please um it's funny i have a, a friend who is not going to take compliments she'll do she'll you know bake something absolutely amazing it suddenly looks like it'd be on television and she's like oh anyone could have done that it's like no but you did it you did it yeah. so we're working on the just say thank you yes or take the the cocky approach which i like sometimes which is like i know right <laughs> i'm socially awkward i'm like <laughs> My daughter is like, thank you. I am good at that. Great, great, good. I love that. I love hearing that. <laughs> We're working on my friends. I'll get her there. <laughs> um, yeah, I would love to know like, if there's been anyone that's been impactful, influential in your career. I know you mentioned your father and like him stressing education. He's my number one supporter. Mm -hmm. um, I was raised by a single dad. My mom mm -hmm. died when I was little. And so he has been my number one pusher. I think I also came in advertising at a time where like women weren't very friendly to one another. And so I never had that mentor that really 
participated with me or gave me feedback or helped me a lot of the women in my life actually were like you can't do that or you don't deserve that money or um you don't belong here because there was really only space for one of us at that time and so um, my dad has always been the person that kind of like lets me go encourages me when i feel like i'm an imposter and we're really close i call him like twice a day he works in the industry as well Mm -hmm. and so he's able to kind of assess Um, what's going on and be that person for me and now that I'm in chief I have like a resource of people um, that do that for me but it's it's taken till I'm in my late 30s to get that Um, I've been just like putting my head down with my dad for a long time um, but I'm happy to have a different space of women to talk to who understand what it is to be a wife a mother Mm -hmm. and an executive Mm -hmm. those are three things that take a lot of devotion and a lot of time Mm -hmm. and I just don't think it's something that most people understand yeah, I, I, we've met a few of the women from Chief. I know Elena's a member, and yes. they're just—it's so fantastic because it's see that you see a lot of like you're, I see a lot of myself. I see a lot of like my friends, people in that who, in that there are women who, like you said, love what they do. They love their family. They love all these interests and hobbies, and it's like finding the ways to balance and having that support network to guide you, provide recommendations, even just to kind of vent or network with. Sometimes is really fantastic they've been (laughs) amazing we spend a lot of time balancing um a lot of them have one or two kids i've noticed (laughs) and it's like at a certain point you don't have the attention to give everybody Mm -hmm. um and while my husband is extremely supportive after finding out how difficult it was to have one kid he was like you travel too much for us to have (laughs) kids and i was like no dude yeah And and like we were saying sometimes you know one kid can feel like a lot of kids and they're just Fantastic. You have to be like best friend and confidant yeah. and playmate. So, like the other day, she, my husband just got off of work. She's like, do you want to play dollhouse on the floor? And he was like, my back hurts. <laughs> but when you have an only child, you have to you have to entertain them. They require sustenance. Yep. Yep. I have I have one son. It's very true. It's like they're all about they're all over you. What are we going to do next? What are we going to do? It's great. I'm bored. <laughs> I know you get real creative with the activities. Um, Okay, I think we're kind of coming to a close, so I'd love to know, is there anything that, anything that we haven't talked about that you'd like to talk about? Any last messages? This has been fantastic, by the way. I love your energy. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to mention BLAC. It's our internship program. So BLAC, our commitment is to increase the amount of representation in advertising, and I'm a board member. And so we have a PNG sponsored program where we take interns who are BIPOC every summer. Mm -hmm. This year we have 70. It's our wow. third year. That's fantastic. Um, and they get to pitch directly to PNG clients. And PNG has the opportunity to buy the work. Mm-hmm. And it's just not a pathway that most people think of. You don't ever wow. hear advertising as an option when you're in high school of something that you want to do. There's Agreed. so many creative young people that we just take the time to like let them know that that's an option and give them the skills to, if they want to be a creator, sell themselves to mm-hmm. bigger clients or approach the difference between selling yourself and selling a product in interesting right. ways. So that's been like my passion project. Um, I I totally get my fulfillment from giving. Mm. Um, and so that's a lot of the fun that I've been having when I was talking about the challenge earlier. Um, the world that I want is not the world that they need. Yeah. And so even though I do a lot of work in DE&I, the things that I'm fighting for might not be enough for them or mm-hmm. just because I'm okay with something doesn't mean that they are. And so getting to speak with them every day is really pushing me to rethink how I frame the world, how I think about creative because they're demanding change right. and they're demanding things of companies. And I'm like, I oh, would never yeah. do that. I know. But they, that's Very what different. they want and this is their world. So yep. I'm appreciative of them. They're between like 18 and 21 every day because it's a good look to see how generations just view Mm -hmm. the world differently and know that I'm outdated. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's wild to think about that, but it's so true to see the different approaches. But I kind of love it because you can see like kind of where they've seen, hey, I like this, this has worked. No, I don't like that. And being really active, being very like vocal in what they want, what they're comfortable with and what they're not. And we're trying to make them their own community. Mm -hmm. So every year we grow in size. I think last year we were about 50. And so the alumni program, we don't stop after the internship. We have an alumni program. And then they're able to kind of help one another Mm -hmm. navigate the business together. Um, So that's been exciting to see them give each other business or 
let each other know about jobs and kind That's of just great. watch them grow together and just facilitate that a little bit. Fantastic. And how if someone wants to learn more about this, is there a website they can go to? It's blacinternship.com. Okay. Fantastic. Um, but it's great. The creatives are great. Um, and I think like you guys have interns. It's just like great mm-hmm. to have interns um, and get new perspectives. Absolutely. Absolutely. And to be able to like answer those questions, because like you said, you know, it's not often that we really understand about marketing, advertising as a field or like just having the exposure to it. Because I know even knowing about it, but when you're actually in it and seeing like all the different opportunities for how you could work in the field, um, you know, it's it's a really rare opportunity. So like we love doing that. We love the art internship program. This sounds like a fantastic opportunity as well. So yeah, I know they, they must be excited. And you have a really significant number of participants in there too. It's a lot. They broke my LinkedIn recently. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw got like deactivated for two weeks because <laughs> they were all it's messaging messy. me so much. They were like, somebody must have messed with your profile. Wow. But they're all really seeking out the guidance and using the I community. So they did it was, they it was a long doing. two weeks, but it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. And thank you. I'm so glad we were able to talk about that because it sounds like a really fantastic program. Thanks. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you on the show and hopefully we can have you back on soon. Thank you. Please.